Hey y'all, it's Kimbu. I just wanted to give you a heads up that Melody and I talk about some heavy issues in this episode, including grief, pet loss, chronic health issues, long COVID, and climate change. While our goal is to help you stay connected to your creativity while dealing with traumatic events, we wanted to let you know what's in store so you can be emotionally ready for it. With that said, here's the episode. Welcome to Around the Writer's Table, a podcast focusing on the crossroads of creativity, craft, and conscious living for writers of all ages and backgrounds. Your hosts are Gina, Melody, and Kim Boo, three close friends and women of a certain age who bring to the table their eclectic backgrounds and unique perspectives on the trials, tribulations, and the joys of writing. So pull up a chair and get comfortable here around the writer's table. Hey, y'all. Welcome back. It's Kim Boo, and you are listening to episode 24 of Around the Writer's Table. And this is a special episode because today we're missing one of the three musketeers. You've only got Kim Boo and Melody here today, and Gina is on the road. She's had some uh, family issues. She's been traveling around. She went up to North Carolina. If you follow her on Facebook, you've seen some of the beautiful pictures she's posted up there. So we're going to hold down the fort while she's dealing with all of that. And today's going to be a little off topic for us. We usually plan these episodes out a long time ahead of time based on the topics we want to talk about and uh, the creativity quest that we've been going over and seasons of writing from Melody's book, um, Soul of the Seasons, um, focusing on plant healing medicine, plant medicine healing. I always get that wrong, Melody. I'm so sorry. (laughs) It's okay. That is close enough. (laughs) (laughs) But today, uh, because we don't have Gina here, we're going a little bit off script. And what Melody and I were talking about before we started recording was the sense of overwhelm that a lot of us are experiencing these days. Uh, We both happen to know a lot of friends and family who are dealing with health crises, whether it's their own or that of a loved one. There's been uh, so much pet death, uh, surprise pet death, um, through a lot of my friends that are dealing with that. And of course, my dog Mm -hmm. Keely is getting old, so facing her mortality is very worrisome for me. And not to mention climate change. We've got the heat going on. Right now, today, it's not too bad here in Tallahassee. We're recording this on July 27th, but the temperature is going to go up next week again, and we're going to be having some wild, wild heat index temperatures, wild and dangerous wet bulb temperatures, so it's going to be something that we're not looking forward to, I assure you. But that quails in comparison to the fires on roads and the hot waters off the coast of Florida killing all the coral reefs out there. And the fires going on up in Canada and down that we the coast. that we have seen the smoke from all the way down here in Florida. Yes, yes. Oh. I was out with my friend Kim, also Kim, uh, the other day, and and she was like, "Yeah." I was like, "You smell that?" And we smelled it. And she's like, "That that has to be local." It was not local, friends. It was literally the fire smoke coming down from Canada, draping across the U.S. and affecting the weather in all sorts of ways. So that's the litany, uh, the depressing litany of things that's going on. Oh, that's the tip of the iceberg. Of all the things. <laughs> Trust me. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I, I've been keeping up with the climate change issue as well, and it's just the, the Antarctic ice. It, you know, it's winter down there in uh, the southern hemisphere, and the Antarctic ice is still melting. So that's not good, friends. We got some things going on, but I don't want to get us into the the depths of that kind of reporting, what I'm trying to focus on is the fact that as creators, as writers, we're all dealing with an immense amount of trauma. And one of my favorite sayings that I ever heard was that you can't be post-traumatic stress syndrome if the trauma is not yet post. If you are in Mm. the midst of it, it's current traumatic stress syndrome. And I think Mm. a lot of us are feeling that in a lot of ways. And what Melanie and I were talking about is the idea of how do we manage that as creatives? How do we deal with the grief of losing loved ones or seeing loved ones, people we care about and lose their mobility, their mental functions? COVID is still ongoing. Long COVID has stolen so many lives. And 
we're just looking around and we're seeing all of that. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And if you don't know me, I'm Kim Boo York. I am a professional author and uh, pro former project manager that works in productivity and coaching, productivity coaching. Let me say that correctly. I do a lot of different things. I've got a lot of newsletters going on. I'm publishing some stories. So a lot of hands in the fire. And I will let Melody get a, a word in edgewise here now <laughs> <laughs> after that long introduction. So Melody, who are you? Why are you here today? <laughs> oh, God. Okay. My name is Melody, a scout, and I love all things plants. I've been called the plant whisperer before. I took a course uh, in two-year training in plant spirit medicine, out of which birthed my book, Soul of the Seasons. And it's based on the five element um, medicine, which is all about the seasons and cycles of life, how they differ, how they work together, uh, what it looks like when you're balanced and what it looks like when you're not. Mm. And we, everything in life has a season and uh, cycles around. So we have been applying this uh, template to the writing process. And if you go back and look at our past podcast, you'll see uh, a podcast in depth on all five seasons. So it is a rich, rich source of wisdom for me. And I love when I can apply it or bring it in or help me cope with adjust, avoid meltdowns, whatever. <laughs> avoid uh, meltdowns. Like there, there we go. That's the, that's the topic for today. How yes. Do avoid meltdowns? Uh, exactly. but I, I, I was excited when I thought of this topic and was thinking about how, what we're going to cover for this. I was actually kind of, I'm not saying excited is probably, but I was interested because grief is so strong and there's so much grief around the trauma that's going on, but there's also the grief and the anger wrapped up in the idea that, you know, this isn't happening to me. Why can't I write? This isn't something that I have control over. Mm -hmm. Why can't I just put it aside and, and write? And I know you've dealt with these kind of traumas with your clients and through, yeah. through the healing of the medicine that you use and that you have uh, access to. So I was really excited to hear some of your insights into, you know, what's really going on while we're dealing with all of this. Well, you know, first of all, as my beloved plant spirit medicine teacher used to say, everything has to do with everything. <laughs> well, that narrowed it down. <laughs> but you're right. Yes, of so, course. And it's like COVID has to do with, you know, us as a population of species and mm -hmm. climate change has to do with all of the species. So that that's true. Yeah. In our and, and what happens with some of these major issues how they're being handled and how we approach and interact with them tells us a lot about where our, both our balances and imbalances are on any particular subject. Mm. You know, and as sensitive um, creatures, sentient beings that we are, as are all beings on the planet, we feel this as I get older and do more introspection and work on myself, I find myself becoming less and less tolerant of accepting bullshit. <laughs> so, which means is I feel things more deeply. And I used to, you know, have this complaint to Elliot is like, what's going on? I am just crying over, you know, TV commercials and the least little <laughs> thing, you know, it was like, um, all this emotion was coming up. And he said, what makes you think there's something wrong? Ooh, we are oh, meant yeah. to feel oh. deeply. We are meant to recognize that this isn't the earth. It's our earth. Mm -hmm. It's Mother Earth, and we're all in community. All the people you love, all the people you do not love, are all part of your community. And however, 
balance is the core uh, at at the very heart of five element medicine. And so if you are feeling overwhelmed by your emotions and you're not able to do the things you want to do, you love to do, like writing or your mm-hmm. art, then that's a signal that there's some kind of imbalance. And Kimbu and I were talking about a little while ago about how that imbalance occurs. And for me, one of the ways is it occurs is when I inundate myself with too much information. And it is a kind of an addictive cycle. You want to be informed. You want to be on the know. You want to know how to prepare. And so I keep uh, ingesting more and more data, more information. And just, you know, I wrote about this in, in my book is like, I love lemon meringue pie, but if I eat more than one piece, I am not doing well. So I cannot have a steady diet of lemon meringue pie, no matter how much I love it. Mm -hmm. So I have to be aware of how I get into my state of overwhelm. What do you think, uh, Kimbu, is it for you? How do you kind of land in that state of overwhelm? That's, it's, when you were talking a little bit earlier about getting older and doing, being more introspective and you kind of, the, the retrospective perspective, right? Of looking back at how I've dealt with things and, for a long time, I made a joke about, you know, I turtle, I, I just withdraw a lot. Mm-hmm. And lately, I've realized, and when I say lately, I actually mean over like the past four years of going into the political situation here in the US. Um, and then COVID hitting us and the pandemic lockdown going on for so long, and then COVID still being around and, and just all of these types of things. I do fall into the habit of trying it's interesting uh, because like I fall into this habit of you've got me thinking Melody so hold on let me like track this thought I pull away from the things that require energy but are enriching and I dive into the things that I can do passively but that are overwhelmingly negative and you know we were talking earlier about the early start of the pandemic and the lockdown where I couldn't barely focus on anything because I was so busy trying to keep up with all the data and the numbers and how many people are sick and who's reporting and who's not reporting and what the politics were and mass does masking work does masking not work like what all these things were and it was a very passive way to feel like I had control over the situation Mm. but in doing that it took me away from the things that I actually do have control over, Mm -hmm. which is, you know, my own mental mind, my own activities, my writing. I did not write almost at all for the first year and a half of the pandemic because I was so busy being scatterbrained about everything else. So, well, you were in survival mode as we all were. (sighs) Yeah. But you know what? I feel guilty about that. I feel guilty about that. I feel guilty that I wasn't able, like you read about all these people. Oh yeah. I wrote four novel you know brian sanderson like wrote four novels during lockdown or whatever and god, it was just god like, bless Why him i do that god bless him you <laughs> are not him <laughs> well, <that's laughs> we fair. we all manage uh stress and threats of survival which quite frankly you can't cut it up or dice it any other way the pandemic was all about our survival and we all went into interesting and creative ways. We have our favorite ways. We have historical ways that we manage stress and the threat of a survival. Mm -hmm. So you did what your very basic self does or has been, you know, taught to do on how to manage that. It's too much. I cannot deal with a global pandemic but I can manage, you know, binge watching Netflix to soothe myself Mm -hmm. or computer games or whatever. 
Uh, yeah, know? like like the first two years of the pandemic, I probably read more fan fiction in those years than I had in the mm-hmm. ten years previous. Like, it's, yeah, <laughs> uh, that that was that was my my escape from everything really, and because the brain doesn't stop, like it still no. wants something, it still yes. needs something, and so I. I, when we were talking about talking about this issue, this is why I wanted to come back around to it because you're dealing with these kind of traumas. What can we do as creatives that won't make us feel more guilty? Like, hey, that's where I'm stuck. Well, feeling guilty is a whole other Dr. Phil that we can talk about <laughs> sometime. Oh, no. Let's that's not. An, that is another uh, reflexive reaction to patterns that were created long ago. So you can take a look at that and like, oh yeah, why am I feel guilty? Uh, Because like everyone else during the pandemic, you coped in ways that were familiar and to a degree effective to you. Mm, Uh, And I do that. And there's nothing wrong with that. If I need to self-soothe by, you know, going and playing my Wordle game for, four hours um, and take, you know, the day to do that. That's, I don't, I don't give myself shit about that anymore. I used to I'm like, I could be productive. I could be doing this. I could be doing that. Yeah. I could be giving my brain a fucking break because <laughs> it's just been overloaded with more than any reasonable person can manage. And we do need a break. And then, however, as I have, you know, done my own inner work, I realize, okay, a steady diet of computer games or whatever, um, it's not healthy for me in the long run. Well, I think it, it, it comes from that bridging point, which where, you know, it's coping, bridging over to addiction. And, uh-huh. you know, I'm, I'm of the the school that believes addiction is trying to fill an empty space, trying to fill an empty space of, of need or, you know, whatever love or whatever you don't have. But, you know, that's the thing that really worries me about situations like that. I've gotten better as I gotten older, as I, at identifying them. But oftentimes these days I'll like pull out of a funk, a two day funk and realize, Oh, yeah, yes. there's there's coping and then there's, you know, aggressively aggressive avoidance. <laughs> well, well, but that tells you that's a clue. If you look at everything uh, that happens in your world as a clue, then that's a clue at the depth of the issue you have been trying to manage. Mm. What, uh, if, what season are is really, are we, because I mean, I understand that, you know, they're all connected and there's different elements of it. But when you're talking about this kind of shared trauma, grief thing going on, is there, can we look to the seasons as, as you've explained them in your book as a way of dealing and yes. working through and getting back oh, to our creativity? Absolutely. So whatever your response is, if you turtle and go inside, that's an aspect of winter where we withdraw, uh, we go in, we need to rest, we take a, you know, our brain, brain takes a day off, our body takes a day off. And it's also connected, that's a season of fear. And that's a pretty natural response to fear is going mm-hmm. within. Um, if you respond with anger, irritation, rage, all of that, then you need to look at the season of spring, which is about expansive new growth, but it's also about um, uh, boundary issues and injustice issues. And we were talking Mm. about this earlier. If you have a lot of anger about what's going on, it is a clue to you that you have, have not been able to resolve the issue in a way that feels effective. It hasn't brought resolution within you. And that, that is really was a big aha for me when I learned about that, because so many of these issues are 
you know, they're global in scale. What can yeah, I like, do? Like, uh, as, I was joking earlier, you know, I can't go throw ice cubes in the, in the ocean off the coast of Florida. That's not right. going to cool the right. sea. <laughs> right. Um, and, and anger, you know, requires actually, that's an interesting analogy. It actually might help you personally if you threw ice and uh, to disperse, <laughs> you know, hurl those ice cubes. Uh, because it it requires a physical response. Mm, so you okay. need to do something to release it through in a physical way. So uh-huh. exercise, dancing. Um, throwing know. ice cubes. Yep, throwing ice cubes. Absolutely. Uh, whatever feels right to you. If you go back into our previous podcast, you'll be able to see what are balanced states in each of the seasons. And I would draw on those balanced states as we lifted. We've also done in our workbook sheets, have listed balanced and imbalanced states Mm -hmm. for each of the seasons. And I would say, go through and look at those and start feeding yourself some of those balanced uh, states, activities, ideas, if you're getting stuck. You know, you may, some people decide, well, it's stress. I may need to work harder. I may need to, you know, work 12 hours a day, seven days a week. So we have included too much fire, too much productivity as a way to manage because that takes us out of our, you know, current state. And we can focus on something that feels productive, you know. So, so what you're saying, what I'm hearing is like the world is unbalanced. People are unbalanced, you know, mm-hmm. you know, health issues, the climate issues, that's all unbalanced. We can't balance the world. Like we can do our part to try to make what's coming easier for ourselves and others. But the real key is to balance ourselves because that's the only way we're going to, that's, that's what I'm hearing is like the balance has to be internal. We have well, to find that balance. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, because that's always where it begins. But I would say that we can balance the world through balancing ourselves. Mm. Because just as you know, we were talking about this earlier, too, when you have the mind that, as my teacher used to say, everything has to do with everything. And you can see that, oh, it's not just a little bit of coral off the coast of Florida, or it's not that just a little endangered frog. That is just part of an entire ecosystem that affects the entire world. When your mind knows that and goes to that and understands that, that also can contribute to the overwhelm. But conversely, our actions, our our endeavors to bring ourselves in in our environment and our communities back into action also spreads on the same way. One affects all. Um, our, so our small actions do make a difference. You never know who's who's watching and listening to our efforts to bring ourselves back into balance and take that on, whether they ever say anything to you or not about it. Mm-hmm. So it can make a difference. If each person helped a turtle out of the road, you know, that makes a big difference to an ecosystem, an entire region. We we saw this in, uh, I was watching a documentary about how they introduced the wolves back into uh, Yellowstone and how oh, I that, love that story. Yeah, tell ah, if, our, if our readers aren't familiar with it, go ahead and recap what happened because I think a lot of people don't never heard of that before. Yeah, because as seen as predators, you know, we want to do the black and white good guys bad guys thing and and wolves are seen as bad guys and they were just hunted nearly to extinction and there became an effort i don't know all the factual details of it but there was an effort to bring wolves back into yellowstone and they did and it started with a very few of them i think there were maybe a dozen or more Mm-hmm. And it, their population grew to, I don't know, I think it's like 1,500 over uh, right now. But that when the wolves came in, the other animals started to behave differently. 
and they moved around. They went to higher elevations. They did, you know, change their patterns. And that changed the whole environment, improving it in Yellowstone just by bringing the wolves back in Mm -hmm. and made it healthier. The same thing was done with beavers introduced back into some small, small area. I think it was, I want to say it was California. Uh, on In the desert areas, they came in on these little streams, built up their dra- uh, dams, and created a whole lush ecosystem in the desert that's now green and filled with life just by reintroducing one animal back into the environment. Truly profound. It, it is. Yeah, it, really it is. is. And... A, I love those analogies because they give me hope. And that's the way I bring myself back into balance is focusing on those things that do make a difference, that have shown change. And it always warms my heart. And it warms my heart as well to read stories about people who faced adversity or a trauma or some tragic uh, um, experience. And they said, this happened to me, but I don't want to happen to anyone else. Mm -hmm. So Jay just started out very simply and talking to their neighbors and friends. And soon it became a movement and powerful and worldwide in a lot of situations. I think too, sometimes we get, because we're, you know, humans and sentient and self-aware, we get a little caught up in the philosophies and the theories and the, and the history. But as you were talking, I was thinking, you know, we need to be the wolves. Like we just need to mm. allow ourselves to be a part of our ecosystem and do the things that we're supposed to do. And then the ecosystem will improve around us. Like the wolves didn't move into Yellowstone saying, you know, I'm going to, you know, change the flow of the river and green spaces up, uh, make greener pastures up higher on the mountains. That was not the goal. <laughs> and it wasn't right. the goal of the people who reintroduced them either, but that's, a, that's what ended up happening. And, and the think, wolf, they did yeah. that by the wolves, just being the wolves, just being the wolves, just being just, there and doing their thing. Yeah. You know. Being themselves. And how critical that is to creating stability and calm, mm-hmm. not only in our own world, you know, you know, this for a fact, when you come into an, a, environment uh, where there's a lot of hostility, anger, you know, you feel that maybe you Mm -hmm. even, you know, brings you into that. But when you have a calm one that also, you know, resonates through us. And there are times for anger, there's times for rage, there are times for all the emotions, whether we think of them as negative or not, I prefer to call them just emotions because they all serve a purpose. Fear serves a purpose. It keeps us healthy. It keeps us alive. It keeps us aware and alert to making healthy decisions that are good and safe for us. So when I turn myself away from the drama trauma on a daily basis, which is hard because it is addictive, uh-huh. it releases Especially- emo- yeah, chemicals in, in your society, brain they design it to be addictive absolutely like you got specifically meant to be addictive 24 hours of doom <laughs> at your fingertips and it has changed our culture and our mindset in our country that 24 hour non-stop it has made people more anxious and fearful less optimistic and honestly the number one way to manage that is just cut it out or minimize it. Trust me, something big goes on. You can hear about it. <laughs> I always used to joke with it. friends um, because like we live in Florida. I used to live further South. I used to live in the Orlando area and uh, you know, people would be tracking the hurricanes and watching the hurricane tracker. And I would not because I've lived here since 1983. And I, they were just like, well, wh- don't you care where it's going to go? And I'm like, look, if an evacuation order comes in, I will find out. Like they will be knocking on my door telling me to leave home. Like that's the, I'm just not going to worry about anything. I cannot control where the hurricane's going to hit. 
I just need to do what I need to do in the meantime, like, you know, prep for it, have water on hand, whatever, get ready to roll. Mm -hmm. If you need to, the possibility exists, like don't be unprepared. But for me, it was just like, there's pointless to just read the hurricane updates every five minutes. And now that I'm remembering that I'm like, you know, I need to bring that energy to my daily life now because there's, I need to be the wolf. I need to just be the creature in the world doing what I need to do, helping the environment in the ways that I can and helping my friends and my family in the ways that I can. And the way to fight that helplessness is to simply be present in the moment and not sit there and read the hurricane updates every five minutes Mm because I can't control those things. And that helplessness is really hard. Like in my grief cycle, when my parents died, like the helplessness is really what overwhelmed me. And I, I, I working really hard not to fall into that, but it's, it's an old habit. So (laughs) I, I, it's a a perfectly natural response, you Mm -hmm. know, grief and losing both parents in a fairly short period of time. But it's a huge amount of trauma to deal with in process. And you can tell from your experience, I know it from mine, sometimes you cannot manage that much and you have to get up and go on with life. And you have to put that on the back burner. And then later in life, it shows up for you to manage and deal with and in process in it and you know there's nothing wrong with that either in fact that is a perfectly uh normal and actually it's your mind and your body protecting you from being completely overwhelmed to where you cannot function at all Mm -hmm. so if we yeah if we start reframing uh, what what's going on with us in our actions and responses to it. I think that's another way of dealing with the overwhelm. And I feel for me, one of the ways that I help manage it is I, A, we all know I'm a big nature freak. So I love to go out into nature or connect with nature on a very personal, physical way. I love hiking. I love canoeing. I love swimming. I love tree hugging. (laughs) Can't tell you the benefits of tree hugging Um, to, to be able to discharge that. And I'm taking off this weekend for that very reason. Like I've been working, working, working. I just need downtime. I cannot produce anything creatively when I'm overwhelmed because Creativity requires a state of vulnerability. And if we are in trauma mode, if we are in survival mode, that is not a safe place. That is not a time to be vulnerable. That's a time to be a wolf, right? (laughs) You know, you just, you lit a light bulb on me for that, that creativity requires vulnerability. I knew that. Trauma response is the opposite of vulnerability. It is it is Absolutely. shutting yourself down like a clam, closing its you know shell. To, boop, nope, not taking any more in. Not going to deal. Not going to be vulnerable in any way. And it's it's the first time I really re- made the connection between those two facts, right? Like I know mm. those two facts independently, but I, when you said that, I was like, oh, that's why I couldn't write during the first year and a half of the pandemic. Because my clam shell was closed. Like I was just like, nope, nothing getting in. Nothing, you know, just like the doors are closed. Nobody's home. And that was my trauma response. Mm -hmm. And so I think that just, that answers a lot of personal questions for me about why my creativity felt so stoppered at that point, because I didn't have, I could not access the vulnerability I needed to be able to feel what my characters are feeling, you know, because, you know, stories involve dramatic trauma sometimes. And even if it's just a lighthearted genre romance novel you've still got heartbreak and anger by so like there's vulnerability as a writer that needs to be there that I was not able to access Mm -hmm. I think what I would like to because you know we've we've been talking about this for a while and we could do it for another two hours but as we come up on the 30 minute mark um what I would like for you to address you're between us you're the healer and I would like to say what would you what advice would you give to authors writers, any form of creative artist, fine artist, 
who are feeling this uh, tug, this, this, this back and forth pull of the trauma mm. response shutting you down so you're not vulnerable, but the need to be vulnerable in order to produce your art. And yeah. like, how, how, can, how can an artist or a writer, who, wherever they fall on that range, deal with that in a productive way. And by productive, I don't mean like output. I mean like internally right. productive, making your life better so you can create mm-hmm. what you want to create. Absolutely. Uh, as I recommended before, I go back and look at each of the seasons and look at those some of those balanced examples. Listen to the podcast because we talk about that. And so if, you know, anger is your jam for everything, Go in and see, you know, feed feed yourself some uh, some area of your life that you can create uh, healthy boundaries and structure, mm-hmm. and s- see how that feels when you do that. If you're, you know, becoming a workaholic or you're just go go go, burning the candle at both ends. Then in the season of summer, bring in something to soothe that, like uh, time with community and friends, some shared laughter, um, asking for help uh, from your community and see how that feels. If you move, you know, if you feel uh, insecure, you know, the season of harvest is all about security and abundance. If you feel that's lacking. Try to bring in those things that make you feel abundant. Maybe it's a luxurious meal. Maybe it's, you know, shared experience with family. Uh, Maybe it's recognizing the abundance of the earth and what she gives us. And go and fall. The the emotion is, is grief. If you feel the overwhelm of the loss. Try to remember what's valuable and precious to you. Try to honor that thing that you feel you have lost or are losing in some way. Maybe even create a little ritual around that. And then in the season of winter, we talked about this earlier. This is a season where, you know, fear, it's about going within. It's a season of rest. Do you need to take time off? Do you need downtime? Do you need quiet? And uh, do you need to give yourself the time and space for those creative sparks to start bubbling up again? And as you go through those, you will begin to see which one feeds you the most, which one brings you back into balance. I mean, they're all designed. We need to draw on all of them uh, to help support us as we move through life. But I think most of us will find, oh, that, yeah, that thing. (laughs) that thing. I need to go have a day with my girlfriends and just laugh her asses off or, you know, whatever it is for you. I need to go hang with my grandkids and just revel in their beauty and how much I, you know, love them. Whatever it is, you will start to know. And in those ways, we can start to feed ourselves, to bring ourselves back into balance. Because the thing is, the thing to remember, a couple things I want to just fill in before we go one is as Elliot used to say um the earth can take and will take care of herself Mm -hmm. yeah that's true we might not fear as well (laughs) if we keep going in the direction that we're going and that was a comfort to me because I felt a lot of grief over the desecration and damage being done to the earth and I thought oh that's right. You know, we may poison ourselves into non-existence or whatever through our actions, but the earth and relatively quickly can recover. And the other thing, if I can remember it, because now my mind just went away, <laughs> is I think to not give ourselves too much crap over what we have done. Or, or maybe what we would consider ineffective means of bringing ourselves or taking care of ourselves. To, the more important thing to remember in that situation is that you recognize that and then you should make a change. Not that you've done it, but 
you've, you're growing and that you recognize it and that you make a change. And as you continue to do that, you will start to recognize it earlier on, you know, so I won't need to go into a six month slump, you know, where I shut everyone and everything out. I'll do, you know, I'll do a couple of days and then I'll go, oh, yeah, look at you do that. <laughs> you could do something differently. We can be taught. It's the <laughs> <laughs> shocking but true. I know, right? If we try hard enough, if we try hard enough, that's yeah. all excellent advice. I think my takeaway for me personally is when you were talking about the seasons, what resonated was that. I need quiet. And by quiet, I don't mean sound. I mean, quiet from the news, quiet from the ongoing trauma, not shutting myself off from the world necessarily, but allowing my brain to take a rest from everything that's going on. And that means not going on Reddit every 15 minutes to check on the climate change, not going on Facebook every 20 minutes to check in all the, the latest grief issues. And when we just, uh, as, as we're recording this, we just lost Sinead O'Connor yesterday on July 26th. Mm. And it's absolutely wrecked me and most of my cohort at Gen Xers for whom she was an icon. Mm. And so, you know, that's, it's good to acknowledge that loss and it's good to mm. acknowledge who she was and everything like that just as we have to acknowledge climate change and what's going on. But for me personally, I think it's time for me to get a little quiet in my life. Mm. Uh, allow, allow my vulnerability, you know, allow the clamshell to like creep open a little bit, allow, you know, things to flow through and move on and, and uh, feel some tranquility. Cause I'm, I'm just feeling very, very on edge about everything. So I think that's the one that resonated for me anyway. What about you? Yeah. You're going, you're going back to nature, right? You said, you said yeah. earlier you're going out to the, the beach. You're going out, not the hot beach, which is down South, but you're going <laughs> to the Gulf coast beach, um, which yeah. is a little bit better off at this point. So. Exactly. That I was thinking as you were talking that downtime is I, my creative, my creative self when I'm too busy, that part of me gets pushed aside or pushed mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. And so I need expanses of time. It's sort of like the creativity is a little being and it's kind of shy. <laughs> and she's got a sense of humor, uh, but she's not to be manhandled. I, she needs time and space to know it's come out to do that, to play, that it's okay. It's nothing weird whatever she wants to do. Uh, so that time and space is good. I am enjoying some of that. I need the interaction with friends, which mm -hmm. I'm going to get also this weekend. I'm going to see awesome. some of my friends. And um, I also need beauty. Beauty is one of the most healing things I can do for myself. I need mm. to be around beauty, whether it's beauty of nature or art or the beauty of people in general. I just need to, that's very soothing and enriching for me. That's awesome. That's going to be great. Yeah. And what a, what an amazing conversation we have. I know Gina's probably going to end up listening to this. So Gina, wish you were here. Like yeah. this has been an exciting conversation as far as some of the topics we covered. We understand why you can't be. Uh, yeah. Our next podcast, we should be back on track with the three of us. Uh, going on. We might do some more ad hoc uh, podcasts like this in between our regularly scheduled ones. Now, Gina and I have talked a little bit about doing one on uh, the subscription model that both of us are working on for our, our writing. So maybe you'll get some extra episodes in there, folks. So that, that would be exciting, at least for us. I don't know about for you. <laughs> but yeah. I, that's it. That's all we've got this week. I will include in the resources links to the older episodes where we talk about the seasons on our website, because that's where you can find the downloads and the worksheets that Melody has been talking about with the page for on our website for this episode. Uh, I don't think we're going to have any specific downloads. I might do a uh, repost. I know what I'll do. I'll repost the overview of the seasons, ah, uh, seasons go. of writing. Uh, so people, if they don't want to go look at the older episodes, they can at mm. least look at that. I highly encourage everybody listening to go buy Melody's book. Um, 
to it's it's not a it's not a Dan Brown novel, okay, people. You're not going to sit down and read things front to back. Uh, it's it's got so much information in it, but when you're when you're lost, when you're looking for some answers, you know, I have my own faith practice, but this is a great supplement to that because it really has. It's almost like an encyclopedia of emotions and thoughts and, and working it with healing and nature. So that's Soul of the Seasons. There is a link on our website, the links to that. Definitely go buy it. I highly recommend it. And I think that's all I've got. I've, I've, that, that's it for me, Melody. You got anything to sign off with? I uh, just, I encourage people also to go on our website. Please leave comments or questions for us or anything yes. that you've, uh, we've talked about that's benefited you. I will, we would love to hear from you. Absolutely true. We've got a little contact form right there. I know it works because we sometimes get spam, but we'd rather hear from actual (laughs) listeners. So please go to our form on our website and give us some contact. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, give us a like, give us a thumbs up, uh, share it with your friends. We'd really love to um, increase our reach with people because we're here to help. So mm. anyway, we're getting, we're going, we're going long. So we better wrap it up. Thank you so much listeners for joining us. This is Kim Boo signing off. Bye. Thanks for joining us around the writer's table. Please feel free to suggest a topic or a guest by emailing info at around the writer's table.com. Music provided with gracious permission by Langtree. A link to their music is on our homepage at AroundTheWritersTable.com. Everyone here around the writer's table wishes you joy in your writing and everyday grace in your living. Take care until next time. <laughs>